This movie is very unique in its way that the second half of the movie, we are with a very unreliable narrator in a way. Um, uh, definitely, I've never seen a found footage movie. Usually, the person behind the camera is your straight character who is supposed to be the one who's sane and seeing things like the audience is seeing it. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, oh, you got your pictures up here too. Sorry, I didn't mean to speak through the uh, end credit stuff. My bad. <laughs> um, where did that idea come from to kind of put the found footage, unreliable narrator type of character behind the camera? When, what was the first inkling for that idea? I hit you with a hard one up front. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I. From the very beginning, I don't like it in found footage movies when. The, there's filming and there wouldn't be filming. Yeah. So for me, at least, I thought a head wound and mm -hmm. all of that stuff <laughs> would make sense. Comfort blanket. I don't know. It was one of the f first ideas. I wouldn't have made the movie if I didn't feel like um, the camera would still be rolling. Totally. I don't know if that answered. The no, I, I just was because you know usually I see you see like the the character obviously is terrified throughout the last half of it, but it's a, it's a different type of. I don't know what's going on as opposed to a lot of like the stuff we've seen from the Blair Witch onward of I don't know what's going on where you're putting the audience in that headspace and I think it's like the most effective use of that I've seen literally since and Austin who's doing the camera back there would agree literally since the Blair Witch Project so less of a question and more of a compliment uh, really um, yeah, not good at this Q&A stuff what <laughs> no um, I just, I just um, yeah I was I, I remember trying like I wanted to make a found footage movie and I was like, well, why would the camera be on in most of these movies, except for the Blair Witch Project, pretty much. Mm. The camera, like, just, I always roll my eyes. Like, what the fuck? Why would a camera still be on? Yeah. Um, yeah. If I got hit in the head with a hatchet, that might make sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's always in the beginning, like, we're filmmakers. And you're like, oh, cool. I, I guess you'd be filming all of this. Uh, let's get to the Q&As, and I have a couple more that I can kind of bounce off of you guys. But who has a Q? First Q? Yeah, I'm going to run this mic back to you. Um, I know you probably get this one a lot, but how much of this is like Lovecraft inspired? <laughs> I've actually never read Lovecraft. You've never read Lovecraft? I mean. So I, so none of it, although <laughs> I'm sure that because of how big Lovecraft is, he's worked his, his way into my brain. So yeah, I've read, I've read a lot of Lovecraft and there's like an idea all throughout his works of like every single main character going completely crazy and like mad and I think this film is like the closest a film have ever gotten to that idea of like your main character being completely out of it and like like you said unreliable like this it's crazy thank you I'm excited to read at the mouth of madness I, ha I have I have I think I have all of this I just haven't actually read it yet. but I'm gonna I'm gonna read at the mouth of madness especially after making this <laughs> thank you for making reading. my point I was trying to make it clear I appreciate that uh, next question. Yes. So I feel like this film is very visceral and sensory. Um, and I feel like it's a kind of film that presents itself to you. So I was wondering how the Outwaters first presented itself to you. Was it a sound? Was it an image? Did you wake up one day and you're like, oh my god, I have to fucking make this. <laughs> like, what first came to you? I was watching Real Housewives. And I was like, no, actually, n no. Um, so, the, so there's a movie called Outland with Sean Connery or Outlands, whatever. It's one of my favorite words. And then so I just remember, I probably had watched it and it was like, Outwaters would be like a cool word, but it's not a word. And I was like, oh, that would be a great like, horror movie title. And it just started for, then I was like, what would that movie be? So it started with the, the word Outwaters, which is basically just Outlands, but something maybe, you know, deeper in terms of uh, the, you know, water has a lot of stuff going on symbolically or whatever. But no, it started with a word, and then I guess images came from the word. And it was all, um, that was all happening around the same time. I was like thinking about making a found footage movie, so just the Outwaters happened to pair with found footage in my brain and I had just seen Willow Creek uh, which I love and I was like oh I like the characters in that and they didn't annoy me and like it felt like actually found <laughs> footage so all that stuff was happening at the same time but sorry with the word yeah and then built it from there 
we've had Bobcat down here for a screening of, uh, of Willow Creek. It'd be cool to have you, Bobcat, a couple of other, uh, we'll do a found footage festival well, type I know of. Bryce from Willow Creek, and mm-hmm. he's, I'm sure he'd be down. Nice. Let's do it. I mean, we're like just talking programming now for the audience. Would you watch that? Would you come out to a found footage fest? The found, okay. <laughs> yeah, we got, fi- we got five people. Willow Creek. Oh, I love it. No, who, who, who has seen Willow Creek? Oh, okay. It's a cute little Bigfoot found footage movie. Yeah, cute. That's a good word for it. Uh, questions? Yeah, front row. Oh, thank you for sure. not... Go ahead. Just go ahead and speak. <laughs> um, so before everything kind of goes crazy, how did you decide on the sort of storyline for the just making it a music video? Like, where did that come from, I guess? I've, I've always wanted to make a horror movie where people were going out to make art somewhere. Whether I didn't... I think originally there was... Not with, I had always been thinking of like people going to like this place and just working on their art, whether it's writing or so that had always been an idea, um, and I just thought it fit well with with this and was natural. That's really it. Does that answer your question? Okay, <laughs> I'll come around to you. Oh, well, we'll go back here first. I'm not good at like actually realizing if I answered the question. <laughs> Uh, kind of off of that one too. What made you choose a lullaby, especially a cover of a classic lullaby, as the song they were making for that, as opposed to making like an original song? Um, I, I've always loved that song. It's actually it's a, it's just like I think I first heard it, or at least the first time I was conscious of hearing all the pretty little horse for a, a cover by Odetta, and back in my dorky. 2008 era YouTube days. It was the first song cover I ever like did. It was a cover of Odetta's cover of all the Pretty Little Horses, um, and it's in the public domain. Uh, so it's just, <laughs> but all those things, yeah. No, but I, 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 love, I love, I've always loved that song, and I thought it, I always thought it was haunting. So, just a lot of this stuff is like intuition, flow, like instinct. It's not necessarily so thought out, if that makes sense. Next question, there we go. You kind of segued into um, what I wanted to ask anyway, but how much of this movie was like ad-libbed for the lines or any of the plot? I mean, if you're comfortable answering that. I'm so comfortable. <laughs> um, most of it's ad lib um, in terms of the specific words that are spoken. Uh, the it was always an idea to just film our actual road trip out there. I mean, we were going out to the desert to make art, as the characters were, so I just basically filmed that. Uh, but in terms of, you know, all the scenes have a purpose, and there were certain things um, that would have to be hit. But there weren't too there weren't too many specific say these specific words moments. Uh, that said. The whole movie was like designed already in my head. It's basically the shot list and script was like in my brain. And but it, it left a lot of room to explore. So there's a lot of stuff in this that wasn't initially thought of that we found while we were shooting. Like the donkeys just <laughs> showed up. So so yeah. So most of it's ad libbed within a structure and character background or whatever. I got a question back here. Yo, what's up, Robbie? Nothing. <laughs> was the self-sacrificing of your uh, penis, was that inspired at all by the Wu-Tang member that uh, took off his shaft while he was zooted? No, I didn't even know about that. <laughs> Look it up. Thank you'll you. love it the most. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. No, that was just pure instinct. Yeah, I think we're going to shift to talking about what um, actually being out in the desert and shooting this movie was like. As a question for Scott, actually. I was just um, going to say. Without putting Robbie and the production on too much blast, what was the most difficult... This seems like it was a very difficult film to make. <laughs> You're like shaking your head now. Uh, what was the toughest day on set? Well, it was more of a general feeling. Okay. If you could imagine having fiberglass stuck in a random orifice, <laughs> that took years and years and years to kind of expel from you. That's what it was like. Wait, what was the question? Uh, what, was it, what was it like working with director Robbie Banfish? No, you answered it. You're good. 
No, uh, no. I just, I really just, I think a lot of people want to hear stories from. I, I watched this movie and I'm like, just making a film like this out in the middle of the desert. I know it just simply couldn't be easy to do. Um, what, what was? Uh, I guess we'll just spin it in a, in a positive light. What was the most rewarding part of that process for you? I mean, I, I can't stretch it. Like, if if you were to imagine having three friends that you knew for ten plus years, and you actually just said. <coughs> We're gonna go camping, and then we're gonna do this extra stuff every now and then. That's what it felt like from my perspective. Um, so it actually wasn't really like that difficult. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there were various moments that were cold when you had blood on you in the dark, and then you would run back and jump in the lake and wash it off. Yeah. But it really wasn't that that tough. Well, you guys me. did a great job because it seemed like it was an absolute nightmare out there. Uh, any more questions? I know we have a bunch more. Mike, uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I guess for both of you, I'm just wondering, have either of you found footage before, be it like a tape, a reel, an SD card? Do you have a story about finding footage? Such a good question. <laughs> Pour in my dad's closet. <laughs> um, I don't think I have. I don't think I have. Have you, Scott? Yeah, <laughs> like found a tape on the street, or like a memory card randomly. I found porn on the street at the Cumberland <laughs> Farms, which is an old convenience store. Um, it was on the top of the trash can, but that's, <laughs> it was strange. I was 12. But yeah, no, I'm not probably in the way you're thinking. That was a good question. We're, we're breaking the record for questions per minute. I love it. Let's get through them. We got more, yeah. <laughs> Worm snake shit. I just don't, that one I leave, you know, I let people, oh, yeah, that, I just because, <laughs> um, for example, I, 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 I wouldn't be like this for like every movie I make, but there's, cert, there's a couple movies I saw and it was very much seemed open to interpretation and I had my own that I made me really like the movie, and then I heard the director be like, actually, it was about this. And I was like, oh, really? This sucks. <laughs> um, so for this one, I just kind of let that, people have different theories and stuff. But to answer the first part of your question, or to speak to the first part of your question, I hate it uh, when characters in found footage which are just fucking yelling at each other and mm -hmm. obnoxious. So I, saw, I thought, um, well, it's just like, I really like each other. Like, typically don't go on road trips with people I don't like. <laughs> um, somehow, half the people still think we're horrible, obnoxious characters, which I find surprising, but, no, but, yeah, I just, I can't stand the, the force, like, conflict crammed into most of those. So, thanks. Got a question right here? Okay, I hope I asked this right, but um, it's a question for you. Um, did you have to do any, like, preparation to get into the mind of your character? Does that make sense? Yes, it makes okay. sense. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Everybody wants stories from me. And they're pretty, yeah, they all boil down to this. There were multiple moments in which it was cold. <laughs> because it was windy, and when you smear fake blood on you, it sucks. But then it was over quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, Robbie has a very free-flowing way of directing and what it, am I doing something wrong with this microphone no. I just not understand microphones I hear a ringing oh it's just some feedback from okay <laughs> um, 
I mean, I guess there was a little bit, like, in terms of, like, Robbie would just give, like, the most basic kind of thing, like, this is sort of what we're going for tonally, but that was about it. And that was the day, or, like, the two minutes before the actual camera turned on, so no. It wasn't really a, a stretch for my actor's imagination. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are too many things I could ask, but I have to pick a few. Um, I just, I really enjoyed, I mean, to piggyback off of the question is, it, it felt very fluid the way that you were directed. I, I feel like almost there was a need for lines to be written for each of your characters. Like you brought your personalities to every character. I felt that they were fully fleshed out. You all were very grounded in that. And I think without that, the movie wouldn't work. Like you have to have a sort of grip on each person that's like going into this thing or else you won't really feel the stakes. You won't really care for any of these characters. Um, did you guys have a sort of idea of, uh, well, let me reframe it. Um, what in a sense, pulled you to make this, in a sense. Um, I mean, because a weird thing is, is why I connect to this film a lot is me and my best friend kind of did the same thing that you guys did. Uh, about a year ago, uh, a friend of ours dreamt that we would go to White Sands, New Mexico, to film something. We kind of had a pull to do that, and when we heard that, we decided we were going to do that. And we drove out, we filmed what you guys kind of, in a sense, created. And it was this, it's just weird uh, connective fabric between this. And it's an alien thing to be out in the desert and to feel this uh, sense of horror and uh, just being out in the middle of nowhere, um, the anxiety of what that is. Um, I mean, we didn't really find it, we just felt it. Uh, and you guys incorporated that and created a sense of that. Um, I'm just curious, like, what was it that made you pull the trigger on creating a story that really encapsulated that for you? Was it a similar kind of curiosity, I guess, of that? I think it was a lot of practical things coming together and, um, desert because I love the desert <laughs> uh, I love the original Hills Have Eyes and um, uh, Wolf Creek like also so that plus the title plus it's just all these things starting to like work out and then it's like oh so it's call the outwaters and it's found footage you know desert Scott's free and just free <laughs> Michelle's free <laughs> So yeah, no, it was just coming together like that. Thank you. Let's do three more. Yeah. Hi. Um, so is there like a definite like thing that you know, like you know what's going on that you're not going to tell us, obviously? <laughs> yeah. Like, do you have the explanation in your head, like all the way thought through? And then yeah. to add on to that... What is your favorite crazy theory that you've seen, like, on Twitter or online? Um, so, yeah, I, the whole movie was built around a, a, a single um, idea and event, and I followed the logic in my brain of, like, how that might play out found footage-wise, so the whole movie is designed around that. Um, but, yeah, that's for the reason I said, but I just don't say what that is, because people have... So, and then, so to answer the second part of your question... There's like a really long Reddit like theory that was just very really long <laughs> uh, and elaborate and well worth it. So I enjoyed that. And then there was, yeah, I guess that one because it was just like so elaborate. I was like, wow, there's like things in here I didn't definitely didn't think of. <laughs> so um, I know I tweeted it. I don't know how to tell you to search for it. I'll tweet it again so you'll find it. <laughs> right. Hi. Um, my question, well, I'll start with this. To me, I just noticed that there was a lot of mom stuff, you know, from like actual interactions with mothers and talking about mothers, but then there was a lot of more kind of abstract imagery, 
for me, it seemed like like birth canals and newborns and birthing processes. Was that something that, first of all, it, I'm imagining this in the first time you heard this, was that something that you wanted to cultivate or was that something that you looked back and said, oh wow, there's a lot of this present in the film? Thank you. I don't know. It's all that, what do you call that shit? Subconscious shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Lots of mommy stuff. <laughs> I got one right. Okay, so while watching, I kind of uh, thought that the uh, the domain, I guess, for horror is very vast. Do you feel like with this, um, you have reached the uh, the full potential of the horror you could get out of this concept, or or do you think it was easy? Do you think you got lost in the sauce or anything like that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think there's always more potential. That's why I made the two shorts. But no, I'm happy with this the way it is. If that answers your question, okay. Is the next one found footage? Tinsman Road. What? Is the next film found footage? Tinsman Road. Yeah, it's shot that on mini DV. It's totally. It's um way more. It's like a st more straightforward narrative. Okay. Shouldn't be as alienating cool. as this. But yeah. Tinsman Road, found footage. You know? We'll talk about that in a moment. One well, right here. Thank you. Um, I really want to know what your mother's reaction to this movie was. <laughs> All right, so the first version I showed her was, if you can believe it, way weirder and more abstract than this. Really, really weird and uncomfortable, even more uncomfortable in, this, in, a, in a way that I don't like it. I didn't think it was like that good. But anyway, I uh, showed it to her. Uh, <laughs> And at the very end, she just looks at me and she's like, hmm. Hmm. I was like, oh my God, she fucking hates it. Uh, but then as I, I saved it for a while until there was like a more fully formed version of the movie, because it was like the very first version, which was so just weird. <laughs> uh, no, she actually likes it now. She would not like it if it wasn't, like she would never watch this if it weren't mine but she actually has grown to like it but yeah no when I cut my dick off she didn't really like that <laughs> <laughs> two more I got one from back here in the booth hey did you have a favorite sequence that you like had to cut for time or just didn't think that you should end up putting in that you really wish you could have or just something that you were really bummed that you had to cut or something like that probably just a lot of little like single shots or, or moments. Probably just a lot of stuff like that. But I, I, d I was able to incorporate some of the stuff that I really uh, wanted, e that I really loved into um, File VO 624, which is one of the, with the epilogue short. Um, so most of the stuff, I pretty, pretty much used most of the sequences that I wanted to use. It's just there's a million little shots. I mean, I filmed so much shit. Um, and different takes, and like Michelle talking about her mom, and or, or just different takes of all everybody doing their thing. They like like loved, loved all of them, so stuff like that. Yeah. Last one right here. Regarding the second act, how much of it was practical? Oh, like special effects? There's no. It's all practical. There's no CGI. There's no digital effects in the movie at all. Um, so yeah, there's, I edited it in iMovie. <laughs> no CGI, likable characters, interesting point of view, great destination shoot, true independent horror film. We love it, folks, we love it. <laughs> Why am I doing this, fuck. <laughs> uh, um, the next one I wanna talk about, so I wanna talk about the two shorts that are currently on Screenbox. Is, is, there, is that Screenbox exclusive right now or can people watch it somewhere else? Um, they're on Screenbox, but I see, like on Am I see it pop up and it's like on, on YouTube and Amazon, you can just press like, but it says like with your Screenbox subscription or pay to, I don't know. But they'll be on the Blu-ray. Oh yeah, hell yeah, we're getting a physical release. Oh, I wouldn't have signed a deal if, I, I, that was like, I, I didn't, yeah. Has yeah, to have a you have to. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so and that's, the next, yeah. that's coming out. They'll be on there okay. and some other secret things. 
and your next feature length film, Tinsman Road, is making the rounds currently? I just showed it at one festival as a work in progress cut last week, um, but it's not making the rounds. I just okay. showed it there, and then I'm going to go back to like working on it working until on it, it feels done and then submit it to stuff. Cool. Once it's uh, made its festival run, uh, will you bring it back here? Would you bring it back to the Frida Cinema? Totes. It'd be cool if you said no. <laughs> I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> Rock <No>. star shit. <laughs> cool. Thank you to Robbie and Scott, everybody. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for staying here. What time is it? That was pretty quick. We got through a bunch of questions. Yeah. 30 minutes. Hell yeah. All right, everybody. Please drive home safe and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. <laughs>